Thank you very much. Uh, good evening to everyone. Thank you very much for, for coming and attending this uh, uh, invitation to this uh, seminar about, um, uh, well, I wouldn't really want to say what it's about because uh, it's not my role tonight. Um, uh, there are many things it can be about and also uh, maybe what this is not about, but uh, not about. Um, which also led to a debate amongst us on how the word came about, the influences from different languages. In a way, it leads us into very nicely into what we think are the Phoenicians, who we think we are with regards to Phoenicians, uh, and we won't really be offering answers. I think we'll be adding more questions to what is already being, being uh, debated amongst yourselves as well, because if you are here, it shows you have this interest. Um, I will keep very, very, uh, very much to the, to the point. My, my role tonight is here to thank people. So I started from you, but there's a few other people that I also um, want to thank. Um, please, please come in. Um, first, being in Summit, the Cultural Association, mostly known for the Mediterranean Future Festival, which happens every summer. Uh, so, it is really organizing this event. And I'm very thankful for the support provided. Uh, the University of Malta, very happy to have had four departments. Um, support this event, the Center for the Study and Practice of Conflict Resolution, uh, the Department of International Relations, uh, Department of Monarchy, um, and the Institute for Tourism, Travel and Culture. Um, I also want to say, in a way, obviously, uh, but, but uh, if you don't write something certain times, you forget them. A lot of the Fenici, about which we'll be hearing quite a, bit, quite a, quite a lot about um, today. Uh, which is a uh, cultural root uh, of excellence of the Council of Europe and which is allowing us to come together tonight. Um, a big thank you as well to Heritage Malta, especially today together with, uh, with Sharon, curator of, uh, of the Archaeological Museum, and yesterday with Sandro, the Roman of Musa, we had a really, really nice encounter and exchange of experiences uh, within the Mediterranean context. Um, I also want to thank very much the ADRC Trust and Mr. and Mrs. Chalmers for their support, for their understanding of what we are trying to do through this networking of, of cultural interaction. And I also want to thank the Strickland Foundation for their support also in terms of uh, media, communication, and in a way understanding and conveying our message. Um, last but not least, uh, our ID team, particularly uh, with Chris Kennedy for the brokering, the, the, the brokerage uh, skill, which is also, in a way, something which throws us back to the Phoenicians, because in a way it's about people, meeting people, and, and learning how to work better together. Um, also, thank you to the Motor Society of Arts um, for welcoming us in this, in this beautiful Palazzo, Palazzo della Sala, and also on a uh, I guess, uh, sad, uh, reflective, uh, but also uh, positive, energetic note. Um, we would like to take the opportunity to dedicate this, this evening uh, to the memory of Professor Sebastiano Tusa, um, who uh, only a few days ago was one of the many victims on the Ethiopian Airlines uh, that crashed on the way to Nairobi. Uh, in a way, that story um, um, uh, through, through a lot of attention to all the communications that happen around the world of heritage, culture, UNESCO, Council of Europe. In a way, it, it, it was a pleasure, which we took uh, shone uh, a light on, on this issue. Uh, but as in conversation with uh, Antonio during these couple of days, um, uh, something dies, in this case someone dies, many people die, and from them, however, together with the grieving in the morning, uh, there seems to be a lot of energy wanting to make up for that life which was suddenly ended, uh, and trying even to fulfill dreams, connections through energy which lives uh, on in other people. And so I will end on, on, uh, on that note and uh, ask um, the, the panelists today to, uh, to, to, to join on stage. Um, I will start from Mario Lirala, who will be facilitating and, 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 and helping us um, have this conversation. Uh, Mario Lirala, practice and background in a number of fields, including migration, uh, LGBTIQ um, uh, relations, conversations, and more internationally and also a certain activism which brings together different areas of culture. 
Um, I see I'm standing already, Osama Tomdan, uh, architect from Palestine, from the Jericho Mosaic Center, who will be speaking together with Carla Benelli, um, who also operates with the Franciscans in Palestine, and they will be also be responding to some questions about their practice in the, in the Palestinian region the Mediterranean. I would also like to ask um, Dr. Antonio Barone uh, to join me. I mentioned him briefly before, uh, the, the uh, director of the Rotary Tenichi. Uh, together with his expertise in cultural tourism and Mediterranean relations, there will be a bit of insights, I'm sure, that we will gain together. And uh, also uh, Professor uh, Rashid uh, Shamoun from the Louis Cardaghi um, Foundation and the Lebanese American University in Biblos, uh, urban planner and also, uh, as you can see, a very um, uh, visual <laughs> person <laughs> to try not to miss an opportunity of capturing visuals and translating them and um, communicating. Um, I would also like to ask Nuradin uh, Ezara, last but not least, um, uh, from um, uh, Marrakech, Morocco, with lots of um, interlinkages in various fields of uh, community, uh, arts, and activism, and uh, also add another dimension to what we are doing. So, I will stop there. Um, I will call on, on uh, Mario and then one on the panel of the media systems with, uh, with the laptop and uh, Mario. Okay, thank you. Uh, my role is to moderate and share this evening. And I'm, I'm also new to this project, so I, I'm learning a lot and learning as, as we've been interacting. And uh, one of the things that I, I tried to understand in yesterday in our meeting and a few Skype calls was, you know, what is the point of this meeting? Why are we meeting here this evening? And, and I just want to share with you, by way of introduction, some thoughts that, that I gathered from the different panelists. Um, and in a way, what I understood is that this is a moment to stop. It's a, it's a moment to stop and reflect on how people cooperate, live together, resolve conflict through peaceful means um, rather than violence. And, uh, and what struck me very deeply was that Rotot um, speaks of another Mediterranean, a Mediterranean that maybe we don't hear much about. Um, but uh, all of the panelists are, are telling us that this Mediterranean already exists. And, and I think throughout our interactions and, and questions and discussions, different, different panelists were pointing to different parts. Um, sorry. Can you hear me or not? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Did you hear me or should I repeat? Um, so, so the panelists in a way were, were pointing at different, they were very much saying, look here, look there. No, don't look there, look here. And I have a feeling that this evening is going to be very much of this kind of, of interaction. Um, the Phoenicians seem to be telling us something that is important for us to hear. Um, and just one last more thought uh, is that when I was hearing the, the, the people who are here this evening telling us about their work was, this is another story of our origins. Um, this is another way of looking at possibly how our beginning, beginnings are. Um, I would like to invite Antonio um, for his presentation. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> thank you for the invitation. I'm very proud to be here in Malta and to speak about the Phoenician's Root. Phoenician's Root is uh, one of the 33 cultural roots of the Council of Europe. Particularly, this one, I can see there. Ah, there should be two. Particularly, uh, it represents uh, the theme of the, the cultural dialogue in the Mediterranean. 
When in uh, 1994 the Italian government, the Ministry of Tourism, proposed the definition route, want to open uh, the uh, the of twilights, how it's important the relationship between the Mediterranean countries. So by definition route, they want to present the Mediterranean as a bridge between different continents. So in this way, they decided the definition route, the name I have to give us uh, suggestions, is not an archaeological route, it's the route of the intercultural dialogue. Our vision is that by the ancient civilization, we can, we can learn more about today, which is the situation of the Mediterranean today, and how we can, together, collaborate to organize something to live in peace and in dialogue. So, uh, for this, uh, Yes. Uh, the, the, the official uh, name uh, of the description of the Finchel route. No, before. Oh, it's a mix. The official uh, uh, presentation is a, a cultural route that uh, uh, speaks about the great nautical routes used by the Phoenicians from uh, around the 12th century before Christ as the main trade and cultural lines of communication in the Italian Sea. But the name Phoenicians is not because we work only about the Phoenician heritage. We work all about all the ancient civilizations, so the local civilization, for example, the people of Malta before the Phoenicians, or the Greeks, or the Romans, or everywhere where are people that they contribute by their civilization to contemporary civilization. So we are the results of all those civilizations. And we have uh, our identity in common. I give you a suggestion. How do you do three with your fingers? Please. We do all the same. This is Mediterranean, this is Celtic, this is America. So we are Mediterranean. This is the reality. And this way we can work together to develop this model to have more efforts by our work. So in 2016, the WTO decided the Phoenician route is another route at the international level important to develop a relationship between countries as the Silk Route. So we are collaborating since 2016 with the World Tour Organization to promote new kind of tourists based on east-west narrator ways. Ways of merchants. The Phoenician world was merchants, not was the Punics that conquer everywhere they was, but they discuss, they have links with all the civilization of the period. So by this work, we have uh, uh, an idea, the idea of the Mediterranean by the ancient roots. Yes, yes. This is the rule of the, the Council of Europe to follow an historical route or a newly created route. The first cultural route of the Council of Europe is the Santiago de Compostela route. We are event a Santiago de Compostela route in the Phoenicians. We have the sea. We speak about the sea, the Mediterranean, as an element to connect all the people of the countries that are involved. So, this is our strategy, to work piece by piece in all the Mediterranean area, to develop new strategies in three sectors, especially, called culture, tourism, education. When we speak about a cultural route, we think of the routes, so in this case, the sea, we speak about the management organization. We have an international confederation where all the countries that are involved discuss, collaborate, to decide the strategies, the works, and so on. But at the same time, it's the idea of the routes. When I speak with the tour operator about the Phoenician route, they have an idea, the Mediterranean, with all we can see, or we can think. For example, heritage, sure. The, the sea as elements of our life the food, or the 
identity, people that can discuss even with the eyes, say the people of the Northern Europe. So this is our value in this moment. Probably we are beginning also a two-road dialogue. We are beginning another element to discuss country by country about those thematical areas. And uh, this is the list of our actual partners. We work uh, in Lebanon, in Jericho, in Cyprus, Tunisia, Greece, Malta, Italy, Croatia, France, Spain, and now uh, enjoying also Portugal. So it means that at this moment we have uh, 11, 12 countries. Before we had 18 countries, but you can understand that in this moment it's very difficult to speak about the cultural roots in Syria, in Libya, in Egypt, in Algeria, and so on. So this is our challenge. We are on the border. But we are working too for the future. So by this strategy of uh, specific routes, we call it uh, smart ways, we are working for the future of the Mediterranean. Every country can develop their smart way, the name is not casual, to decide their future in the field of culture, tourism, education. Integrate the first time that culture and tourism, education speak together. Decide together what they can do together. At the same time, by this, we can promote a fidelization of the Mediterranean. It's not important people return every year in the same country. One year come in Malta, another in Spain, another in Italy, but they remain on the finished route because we have the same standards, the same welcome, the same uh, activities standard, standardized by the uh, smart ways. We was the uh, element of the IACHO declaration of 2018, eight, sorry, the Mediterranean countries five more five, our will and to push a concept the policy of sustainable development and tourism within the framework of the convention and principles to which we had uh, especially through itineraries of federative highly cultural events such as the Phoenician route. Now we are working by the work of our president and the Minister of Tourism of Lebanon to promote an autumn and other agreements based on this, where all the countries of the Mediterranean area, all the regions are there, joined to present the new kind of cultural tourism. We want to renew the idea that people arrive a place to visit only quickly something. This is a dignification of the culture. We would like to give more contents, more sensitive to the visit of a place where the community welcome people. We are following the Faro Declaration, the Faro Convention about the role of the heritage for the community, for the society. And we are working everywhere by European projects to develop this idea. We have also by initiative by Kassan, so have uh, the possibility to do it in Malta by some European project financing that we are starting now. So I would like to continue my discussion with you in another meeting where we can work together to develop the Malta product. To finish my presentation, not finish. For the moment, I I would like to invite Rashid for his presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm really honored to be in this loving, wonderful city for the past 24 hours. I'm, I'm in love in, with the highest respect for the heritage initiative that you have after visiting the Museum of Modern Art and the Archaeological Museum of Malta. Okay. Okay. 
Lebanon is more than a country. It's a message of freedom and an example of pluralism for East and West. Jean Paul said this in 1980, Jean Paul II. Since then, his words have been a life of their own in Lebanon. Christian and Muslim leaders using them to say what country would be in lieu of what it actually is at the mercy of opposing political currents and ideologies. Lebanon has a cultural heritage almost as old as the earliest evidence of humankind and benefited from long succession of Mediterranean and Middle Eastern cultures. As a testimony to history, it can be therefore suggested that Lebanon has a composite cultural identity exhibiting the perpetual interplay of history and geography in the following layers of civilization that you see on the slide. The, object, the objective Middle Eastern has always been associated with a specific geographical area from Southwest Asia to Northeast Africa. On the other hand, Mediterranean connotes great cultures that have grown bigger, wider, and richer than its geography. Identifying oneself as Mediterranean is a direct association to Mediterranean Sea, where some of the most ancient civilizations flourished and dominated the region for millions by Phoenicia, Carthage, Greece, Sicily, and Rome. Despite the geographical overlap, Middle Eastern and Mediterranean are culturally distinguishable. While the former is looking toward Arabia, and the later, the latter has kept its cultural umbilical and connections to Europe. In this context of cultural identification, what can, be, what can we make out of this cultural silver lining in countries where the regional as well as the cultural dimensions overlap, bringing up all possible cultural elements of identification and contradictions? What would become of the Lebanese people? Where would we? They draw the line between their Arab and Phoenician cultural heritage and their belongingness. Would they look east or west? Would they put their Arabian or European face? Where would their source of cultural pride come from? Should they feel closer to the Red Sea and Persian Gulf culture or far more comfortable in their European shoe? What, source, what socio-religious compass or encompass should their face hold? Any definition of human nature is dangerous because it threatens to devalue the exclu or exclude some acceptable individual desire, cultural characteristics, or way of life. Where do I stand? How would I locate and unmask my multi-composite identity of being? Haiti, ancient Egyptian, Phoenician, Middle Eastern, Greek, Roman, Byzantine, how would I unmask my canvas of despair, embrace the Arabian desert, bathe in the Arabian Gulf, and wash away my sins in the Mediterranean Sea? I consider myself as a cultural layer of my ancestors and transparent foundation for further generations. As a composite structure of many parts and means, I physically disconnected, I am physically disconnected, but morally rooted and culturally interchangeable. Such a phenomenon may help unfold or unfold my mutual, cultural, standing, a socio-political transformational journey from the soul of the past straight into the heart of the future, through the Phoenician route. The changing slice of both, self-portrait, 
and fertile crescent maps represent an ethnographic interplay of history and geography, radiating in a wide range of multi layers of social, political, and geographic ethnic proximities, exhibiting the various civilizations and cultures that have had an impact on Lebanon's present identity and all of our identities. To those who are interested in the exploration of others and one's self-cultural diversities, I overtly present myself. I consider myself a citizen of the world, stretched over the tensile line of two cultural extremes, the Western and the Eastern, the Middle Eastern the Mediterranean. I seek to observe and understand and strive to tolerate and continue to distinguish and evaluate the various theoretical and practical experiments. My religious confirmation, training, and practice have contributed to my communal concerns for social justice. My educational journey since adolescence Transitional phase of growth and in development between childhood and adulthood, cultural identity has played a significant role in the transformation process of structuring my social involvement and professional practice. And this is why I am currently involved in the Phoenician route. Global conflicts have contributed to my ethnic distinction in turn classifying me neither black, white, nor Hispanic, but other standings. Like, they tell you to pigeonhole yourself if you are white, black, Hispanic, or any other ethnic. I never found a pigeonhole that really reflects me, because I am all of the others, and I believe in the others. My affiliation Coexistence with diverse social cultural structures have contributed not only to my academic and professional standing, but also in the structuring of my social awareness towards a heterogeneous, circular, classless structure versus a linear, horizontal abstraction and vertical social empowerment. This above confessional discourse as a composite and diverse educational, cultural, religious, political platform within and beyond parameters of both the Eastern and Western cultures has contributed eradicating intensified social barriers, diluting communal segregation and confronting class distinction with a classless social vision. In conclusion, I consider myself socially transformed through this process. I am neither left nor right. I am a new liberal and always ready to move with the world towards new constructive political and social dimension. In my capacity as the president of the International Confederation of the Phoenician Route, I consider my role more of a mission than a project through the International Dialogue of Cultural Roots of the Council of Europe, as a student of nation building. My priority is to reach spaces that are socially, politically inclusive, develop ethnographic mapping within the context of integration in overlapping zones of social connectivity, search for mobility, develop common spaces and transform tensile lines into elastic biotic boundary lines. Currently, the Middle East is experiencing a new set of geographical boundaries and subdivisions. And you see these maps, they keep evolving and they keep changing. Currently, the reality of this situation is that the diverse head modes will become further dispersed in my since my concern, we will no longer recognize each other's differences as similarities in the hope that we continue, that we remain independent, liberal, morally rooted, and culturally interchangeable. I thank you very much for being present.
Uh, this presentation has been prepared by me and Okama. Okama did the major work. <coughs> if I sit in closing it. Uh, Let's exit. Um, if you, yes, I, I'm not able to exit. But thank you for everyone in any case for uh, the invitation. Um, did you succeed? Uh, okay, yes. Okay. Uh, yes, it seems. Okay. Let me go out of this. Because of Asia, Africa, and Europe. It is also a common idea that it has been a demo of power or a battlefield among the peoples living on its shores. The Mediterranean Sea is one of the world's most important sea in terms of its contribution to the formulation of human history as a whole. From the moment human began to manufacture boats and ships, the Mediterranean Sea became a mean of connecting continents, taking advantage of its intermediate geographical location in the then known world. From this central location, the sea derives its name. Communication on the ground has been launched from the shores of the Mediterranean to distant places. The Silk Road between the eastern Mediterranean ports and the countries of the Far East reached China the spices and precious stones routes were launched from Egypt to India, linking the incense and ivory trade routes between the Mediterranean and the eastern shores of the African continent. For thousands of years, the Mediterranean has been a guiding center for various human activities. The network of commercial roads, battlefields, meeting places of civilizations with their societies, cultural, knowledge and economic patterns have all seen their first signs in the Mediterranean region. A common feature is that the Mediterranean civilization were never closed on their own. This confirms that all inhabitants of the Mediterranean basin, Phoenicians, Etruscan, Arabs, Byzantines, Roman, Greek and others, contributed to the factory of its history. Despite the common influences left by the empires that followed one another, the Mediterranean is neither a state nor a nation and has no legal or ideological framework. The Mediterranean has no anthem, no flag, no common currency, and its peoples belong to three continents. People interact with each other and communicate and exchange relationship of admiration but they often clash more than they intermix. The history of the Mediterranean is like a beautiful drawing. Seen from far away, when you get closer, it becomes more beautiful for all its details. In fact, these components do not give a common characteristic, but a set of similarities that diverge and converge according to time circumstances. In all cases, if there is no Mediterranean passport, there are Mediterranean smell, colors, and tastes. It is also a shared memory which overlaps and left marks in our daily life. The Mediterranean space creates a historical and civilized exception in the history of humanity in general. A scrabble of civilizations 
work on monotheistic religions, spaces that witness the development of human capacity and technical and artistic activities. It is a model of coexistence and identity. A call to share Mediterranean history helps to avoid narrow identities, to recall the past, should support sharing the present with the others, although sometimes there are great distances of misunderstanding. We are aware of the present conflicts in the area, but the idea of Mediterranean basin remains a future horizon based on the historical and cultural civilizations shaped along the centuries. If we want to respect the intensity of the historical, anthropological, and cultural events witnessed by the Mediterranean basin, any one of us should determine ourselves without being at the expense of the others. We normally identify ourselves with the actor of the past, with their victories and defeats, and this should not lead us to take part in one civilization or another, for one identity or another, for one religion or another. The main protagonist must be the Mediterranean, a common space. Mediterranean communities are responsible for preserving the human environment for all humanity. If the northern shore, under certain circumstances, is currently experiencing a great development that goes beyond the southern shore, we should remember that it benefits from a common work in the past. We must now work together to share. And I leave the floor to Osama, which will uh, elaborate more about the Palestinian experience. Thank you very much for your coming. Uh, I, was, I will not uh, uh, talk about the conflict if it is not for uh, everybody, because it's a land of conflict. It's not just now, but in the past it was area of conflict. But I would like to uh, continue the, the, the illustration about things that uh, Karma she said. How I can see Palestine? And as uh, Professor Rashid said, how I can see myself in Palestine like Palestinian. I will go so quickly for some sites that they are present in Palestine. It's so pretty that uh, sometimes the name of Palestine is give uh, disturb somebody, not everybody. If you see, if you notice, know, for example, in the Rota of Finici, we call the Palestinian partner like Governorate of Jericho. And it's, uh, it seems shame, but uh, sometimes it's reality and we have uh, to go on. Old Jericho, 10,000 years old. 27 stratification of cities in the Taraj. Lula Bralai or Villa of Heralds. But you, I bring it just to show the technique, Roman technique used with local material in Palestine. The Nativity Church from the first churches, Christian churches in the world. And the first monasteries that we have it in the desert. Synagogue. We have a lot of synagogues in that area. And in this period, in 6th century, 7th century, in Jericho itself, they were synagogue, churches, and palaces from Islamic time. The Dome of the Rock, Jerusalem, from the most important 
sites for Muslims. But if you look, you, have, you see how much it's similar of the uh, architecture uh, churches, not in the area just, but in the world. Holy Sepulchre. From this, it's, it has old origin from Constantine, but it is the same time. This is the result from Crusader's time. Nabi Musa. It's like monastery, Islamic monastery in the desert, recording memory of the museum. Jerusalem, the Mamluk period. Jerusalem, it's Mamluk city. And it has this character. Ras Karkar, it's palaces of Ottoman period. period. And it was in the villages of Palestine. Concluding, this is, I will show you the I bring, this is its mosaics. The big one, as you see it, it's from Hisham Palace in Jericho. It's from 8th century Islamic palaces. But the first one up, I took it in the uh, Museum Nazionale in Rome. It's Roman. Third century. But down of this picture is the Nativity Church, fourth century. 